right. What's up, everybody? It's that time again where I need a shave, baby. I need a little shave. This is Jose Trujillo, the world's greatest living artist. Just wanted to say hi to you, friends. Um, so I've, I've got a couple of questions from from other artists, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to both of them, but I'm going to get to one. That's for sure. The first question that I get, uh, that I got asked again this morning, I, I get asked this question all the time, but this morning I got asked this question again, and this is. How do you know what sells in regards to selling artwork? People see me selling my artwork, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or, or uh, eBay or whatever. How do you know what's going to sell? The reality, my friends, is I don't know what's going to sell. I have no idea. Um, most, of my, most of my career has been just shooting out artwork. Just creating it and putting it on the marketplace. Create more, put it on the marketplace. That's taught me a lot. That's taught me that that I know there's artists out there who have a singular style, a singular thing that they're doing, uh, a theme maybe. Maybe they're just painting, I don't know, uh, seascapes or landscapes or cityscapes or or maybe they're not doing anything figurative. Maybe they're just doing abstract work, but they use the same palette, the same form, the same thing. And it works for them. That has not been my experience. I, I really wish that was my experience. That wasn't my experience. Uh, and what I've noticed with artists like that is that they, they, they tend to be more like a gallery artists. You know, they show the same stuff in different galleries. And I don't mean the same paintings, but they're sort of the same thing. Pretty much the same thing. They just go to different galleries. Uh, and, and that's how that's kind of how they get that boat rolling. My experience has been I just create artwork uh, and, and I shoot it out and I don't think about what's going to sell and what's not. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll share with you a little secret here. When I think about what's going to sell, when I when those thoughts do come into my mind, it's it's not um it's not uncommon that I begin to mess things up. Okay, this makes sense. Uh, what's up, Bill? How's it going? It's not very uncommon when those thoughts come into my into my mind, into my into my life. Uh, thoughts like, "Oh, I wonder if I paint a landscape and I paint it like this, it's gonna sell better than if I do this and I, you know, I don't know, over a seascape or whatever." When those when those thoughts come to my mind, I, I tend to not do very well, uh, or as better. I I, I, I do alright, but I, but but as better as uh, just not caring. There's something about not caring about those kinds of things, and and mo most of you, most of you, um, don't. And I say most of you because 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 I, I I know that feeling as an artist. Most artists get this idea of getting stuck in the theme of the painting. You know, you get stuck in the theme. You get stuck in the color palette. You get stuck in the yeah, the theme is a big one. You get stuck in the size of the painting. You get stuck in the there's all these parameters, all these limitations that are created around around selling artwork. And so so this is a question again I got asked, what do you know? How do you know what sells best? Like do you have this idea about man if I paint something like this I'm going to sell it better or or it's going to fly off the shelf or I'm going to have a a lot of people bidding on this auction if I do this. It, it's it's no Generally, do I have an idea? Of course I do. I have ideas about, you know, generally there's certain subjects that, that tend to do better than others generally. But none of it is true. 
None of it is true. Um, the ultimate truth is there's all these parameters around your work. All these things that you're doing to limit yourself. You're limiting yourself with the size of the painting, um, the theme of the painting, uh, meaning is it going to be a landscape or a figurative work or an abstract or what is going to be. You're limiting yourself with the style of the painting. Are you painting impressionism? Are you painting uh, expressionism, realism, whatever? You're limiting yourself with all of that. Uh, and, and there's all these little added limitations that come with it. There's a bunch of added limitations. Uh, such as, if I sell here, can I sell there um, in this other platform or this other place? If I sell my artwork at auction, am I going to be able to sell it at full price somewhere else? Like, not the same painting, but the same artist, right? If you're putting some of your work at auction and then some of your work on, like, I don't know, Saatchi art or whatever, where it's, where it's higher end or first dibs, or one of those places that it's, that it's, uh, tends to, you gallery, those type of places that tend to be, uh, getting, uh, retail prices for your work, do you do that, are you able to do that, and so, what I discovered as a full-time artist, is that there's a shitload of limitations, like, I mean, tons, tons of limitations around you and your art, and all of, this, all of these limitations are created and reinforced by other artists. The collective, the collective mindset of the artist is really what's holding you back. It's almost like it's choking you. It's, it's, it's pulling you back. You have this idea about being an artist, a full-time artist or a part-time artist, whatever your deal is. And you're moving forward and you're like, I'm going to create this painting. So I'm going to put this, this work on, on canvas. And then the first thing damn fucking thing that runs to your mind is oh my god I don't have any frames should I frame them and so limitation oh my god maybe they're too small I should do it I should do them bigger limitation um I can't sell other than than on brick and mortar or I can't sell other than online or if I paint one day if I paint a landscape and then the next day I paint a puppy portrait then my you know, I'm gonna get. It's gonna get lost. My 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 vision as an artist, or people are gonna think that I'm all over the place, and they're not gonna respect me, and they're not gonna respect my prices, and on and on and on and on, and it's just this shit. It's just this shit that keeps messing with you. You know, it keeps messing with you in your mind, and 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 this again, this is carried and reinforced by the collective, the artist collective. This is, framers are doing this, um, gallerists are doing this, artists are, are, I mean, artists are the worst at this. Artists, artists just like, your, your worst enemy happens to be probably an artist, another artist, when it comes to moving forward. And they, they, don't, they don't mean it in a bad way. They're scared, everyone's scared. When it comes to selling your artwork, marketing your artwork, everybody's scared. There's this fear around the whole thing, you know? There's this fear associated with just getting out there. And so people people have this, this idea that, that if I get out there, it needs to be this perfect way. It needs to be this, I don't know, the right way. And, and I'm here to tell you, there is no right way. There is no, it doesn't exist. It's, it's uh, It's made up. It's made up. This whole idea of, of how do you know what prices, you know, what, what sells best for your artwork is another limitation. Because it's, it's, it's suckering you into believing that if you have all the information, then you can move forward. It suckers you into believing that. Man, if I have the information that Jose has, oh yeah, I, I would just move forward. It's not true. It's not true. It, 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 takes, it takes trust in yourself. It takes, it takes guts. It takes that, that, that leap of faith 
going into the unknown and saying, I don't know what's going to happen. And, and it be okay not knowing what will happen. Uh, what will happen is something good, but it happens in small chunks. It happens in such small chunks for most people, most of the time, that, that, that people don't want to commit to it. You know, they don't commit to it, so they say, nah, man, this is not going to work. It's, it's sort of like, it's, I, I compare it to, to like me trying to get to the gym. You know, I'm going to go, blah, 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 I'm going to go. And I go in the gym or whatever. This, this was me. Now, now I'm changing my idea about that. But that was me going, trying to get to the gym and trying to get healthier and whatnot. Go and get on the treadmill or, or, or try to eat well and whatnot. And, and two weeks gone by and I don't see any changes in my body, but I restricted my diet completely. But I completely restricted my diet and, 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 uh, and I'll have back pain because I was running or, or, you know, some shit like that, right? This had happened to me so many times trying to get to the gym. And, and because the change happens in such small chunks over long periods of time that, that, the idea is this this is this is not getting anywhere and i feel like i'm sacrificing so much and so this is this is something that i discovered in my career early on this the small the small little things are not really small they compound at some point they're going to start compounding but never mind about that never mind about compounding and whatnot just the fact that you get the ball rolling it opens you up to so much opportunity and so and so thinking that you're going to somehow figure it out and until you have it figured out you're not willing to put the effort or the movement is is a uh, it's a mistake it's a mistake it's a mistake in in, in 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 your career if you're an artist and you're doing this you're you're uh, you're holding yourself back and you're doing it in such a way that it's not it doesn't seem like 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 it's it's a little malignant not on your part but <laughs> but you're doing it in such a way that that it it makes you feel intelligent and it makes you sound intelligent when you ask questions like that to yourself you know uh if i go to this gallery i just want to sell in this type of galleries boom Yes, you've told the universe what you want, but guess what? You've also told the universe, don't give me mysterious ways. Don't give me mysterious ways to thrive. It needs to be this way. And if it's not this way, I don't want it. And so a lot of the stuff that has happened to me in my career has been, has been pretty mysterious. It has been pretty mysterious. One of the things I'll tell you, uh, when I started selling my artwork in different platforms, it's one of the things that I, I highly recommend artists uh, using different avenues. Um, when I started doing that, all of a sudden I started getting these lines of not, not just uh, opportunities, not just people asking me, "Hey, can you can you do this painting? Can I com you know can I commission you to do this painting or that or or if I buy two or if I buy three, can you get me a deal or you know opportunities? Questions, right? Questions are always opportunities. My God, there, there's so much opportunity. Uh, but sales also, where I would wake up and I'd be like, "Oh my God, I saw this uh, you know on Etsy or I saw this on Saatchi. Oh, that's so cool." I started getting this this these things happening. That almost look like random. A lot of the stuff looks very random. Um, I get I get people buying my stuff from uh, they watch a video on YouTube. Very random shit. It's very random. It, it, you, you you wouldn't think you know like it was it was a rant that I did on YouTube and people are like, oh that's so cool. You know you made me laugh with your rant. I went and I looked you up. And I really like your work. I sat on it for like a year. I don't know which work to get, but I knew I wanted to work from you. Boom, a year later, I buy a house. I need a, I need a, a larger piece for my wall. And I chose you because you made me laugh on one of your rant, you know, one of your stupid rant videos. They didn't say it like that, but pretty much what I do. I make like silly, you know, just videos like this because I'm not overthinking about it. The more mysterious it is, the more exciting, yeah. 
And so I'm not I'm not thinking about it. And so if you're an artist and you're you're trying to get your artwork, and by the way, this doesn't just apply to artists. This is this is life. But if but if you're an artist and you're trying to get your artwork out there, stop thinking about it so much. It doesn't do you any good. Stop stop getting in your own way. The the universe favors action. It just does. I, I, I think I think there's two things very very beautiful that I'm able to observe in the universe and in, in life in general is that there's there's rest and there's movement. There's rest and movement. And both of them are equally as important. Rest and movement. Like music, right? There's the note and then there's the empty space and the note again, empty space. And, and so there's rest and movement constantly in this in this this thing, this universe, this place. And as an artist, I think it's important to follow it, to follow that rhythm. When you are thinking and overthinking about what you're doing, you're not you're not moving and you're not resting. You're not move you're not in movement and you're not in rest. When you are thinking about what to do and how to do it, and the the enthusiasm has come out of your spirit, you're not enthusiastic anymore, you're in fucking hell. I, I wouldn't call that I wouldn't call that any anything good. There's nothing good about that. I call that hell. Because because that's the opening the door for stress, for anxiety. Oh my god, how am I gonna sell my paintings? Where am I gonna sell? Don't worry. Trust in trust in your favorite deity. Call it call it God, Christ, Buddha, Allah. I don't know. Whatever you call it. Trust in that. Lord Krishna, who knows? Whatever. But trust in that. Trust in that. Because when you trust in that, you're you're in movement. You're in movement. And when you rest, you're you're resting in trust. If this makes any sense, when you and I'm not talking about resting necessarily, just going and, and like napping or going away or <laughs> I, I don't know, <laughs> taking a couple of days off. Very important, whatever. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you're not, when you don't know what to do. When you're like, I don't know what to do. Uh, make sure that you your don't knows. Your don't knows are uh, the don't knows that are in your in your mind. Uh, make sure that those are observe yourself. Are they uneasy? Do you feel uneasy about it? Do you feel a little shaky? Do you feel a little stressful? Do you feel uh, a little anxiety? Oh, I don't know. Or does it feel like, yeah, I don't know. You know, is there an I, is there a light? I don't know. The light, I don't know, is the rest. And it's okay to have that too. There's moments where I'm like, there's there's even days where where I'm like, yeah, I have no idea what the hell is, what the hell I'm gonna do next. Like where am I gonna take this or, or how am I gonna grow my business or whatever. Uh, and I, I used to not honor those times. I used to be like, no, I need to know. And it, whatever little time I had, I, I, I used it to overthink. Oh, I'm gonna plan this thing out. And now I'm 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 learning more and more that there's there's far greater power in not knowing. There's a shitload. Of, I mean, the, the the if this is me, right? The power is is in not knowing. That's really what the power is. That's that's the thing people call call uh, faith and trust and 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 uh, trusting in God or listening to your angels and whatever you know people people use all this all this all these words to make sense of it and it might be true it might not I don't know I I know this I know this it's true if you if you believe it's true and it's not if you believe it's not you know but through, throughout my my career I've I've been encountering I've been encountering this thing uh, of just letting go of those expectations and those ideas, and and they've been they 
the biggest blessings in my life. I mean, by far, they've been the biggest blessings in my heart. In my heart. To be able to just uh, let go of those ideas, you know. Those, those ideas that, that I need a big studio or I need a... I need something to complete myself. I can't sell my paintings because they're not framed. I can't. I can't go to. They're. They're bumps that that we create around ourselves in order to keep ourselves in bondage, so that we don't go after our our goals, after our desires. Um, and they're created by, they're created in place, put in place by us. No, no one's doing this to you. This is a collective. Uh, you know, sort of like when you become a uh, anything, you, you you jump into the collective. If you're if you're a father, you jump into the collective of being a father, a mother. Uh, if you are a a uh, doctor, you don't just become a doctor an independent mind you get into the collective you get into the collective of the doctors and unless you start learning how to not just listen to the collective you can't really it's important to listen to the collective because whether you want to or not you jump into the collective into the 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 the, the, the agreed upon rules the sacred cows the modus operandi right you, you jump into that collective but it's also good to let go of the collective. Had I not let go of the collective, I, I, I think it would have been very, very difficult for me to, to become a full-time artist to begin with. Everybody was making one painting a day, the little paintings. That's during the recession, that's when I started, during the house bubble, the recession. It was very difficult for so many people. Everybody was talking about how difficult it was. Business closing, uh, you know, left and right, and, and, and Money shortage. People talked about money shortage all the time, everywhere. Kind of like similar to what's going on right now. And uh, and and I jumped into the collective of the artists. And artists, artists painted. They created artwork in order to sustain their lives when the galleries were having a hard time in the early odds. Galleries were having a hard time. This was 20 years ago or so. Galleries were having such a hard time that um, that artists started looking for different avenues. And if I make one little painting here and I put it on eBay or I put it on, on you know, I create an email list. Artists started becoming uh, um, free thinkers in that way. You know, a lot of artists are becoming free thinkers. But that free thinking became a collective also. It created the groups of the daily painters, the plein air painter groups and whatnot. It became a collective. And so everybody that is part of the collective starts thinking the same way. They're dancing the same dance. And I was like, I was like, I, I don't want to dance the same dance. I like it. You know, it works for one or two of you, but it doesn't seem, I remember uh, this guy, I think his name was Dwayne Keyser Cruiser, something like I don't remember something. Dwayne K, I know, I know, I think it was K. Uh, he was a daily painter. He was he was putting a, a painting on eBay, and every time he posted a painting, it would sell between three and six hundred bucks every single day. So that ensured that he would make you know I don't know like ten k a month or whatever. And so that made sense, right? But everybody jumped in. We all wanted to do it. Guess what? None of us were getting three to six hundred dollars a little painting. None of us. Very, very few people. It was, it was only working for one or two. And so I, I started getting out of that collective and being like, okay, well, how can I do this without thinking the same way everybody is? Anyways, I don't want to confuse you guys. But that was that. I'll leave you with that. The name is Jose Trujillo. Get out there, guys. Do, do things differently. Don't, don't, don't keep doing the same thing. Hey, what's up, dude? Don't keep doing the same thing everybody's doing. If it's working, keep doing it. But if it's not working to the way that you want it to, amp it up. Move around. Move sideways. All right? Thank you, sir. Absolutely. All right, guys. Peace out.